What is up guys, welcome back to Learn, Share, Photo and Video. My name is Sijam and in this video tutorial, we're gonna be talking about how to adjust your settings to get better lighting in your photos and videos. Before we get started guys, I just want to let you know that on this channel, we discuss photography and videography tips. So take a minute to subscribe to the channel, that way you don't miss any future videos. Okay, so when you're taking photos or videos, your lighting is the one key thing that will make or break your image. There are three factors that affect the overall brightness or darkness of your image. These are ISO, aperture and shutter speed. And when you put them together, that is what is known as the exposure triangle. For this video, we're just gonna be focusing on one aspect of the exposure triangle, and that is our ISO. Okay, here's a quick tip. I recommend manually selecting your settings when you're shooting because one, it will give you a better understanding of how your camera works, and two, it will accelerate your learning process in photography or videography. Now, what is ISO? This is basically your camera's sensitivity to light, how well your camera is handling the light that it is seeing. Higher end cameras or more professional cameras tend to have better ISO capabilities versus the more consumer based cameras that also have good ISO capabilities, but they're not as versatile as the higher end or more professional cameras and the more professional cameras tend to be more expensive. A key thing to remember is that where your camera may be lacking in ISO performance, you have two other factors of the exposure triangle in which you can compensate for that lack of ISO performance. When considering the quality of your photos or videos that you wanna achieve, ISO directly affects your image quality because the higher up you go with your ISO, the more you start to lose in quality versus the lower you are able to keep your ISO, the more image quality you're able to retain. Whatever conditions you're shooting in, this will affect how you select your ISO. If you're shooting outdoors at midday when the sun is absolutely fire, then you'll need to be at a lower ISO to compensate for that harsh sunlight. And on the flip side, if you're shooting indoors or in a low light situation, you're obviously gonna need to be at a higher ISO because there's not much light available. However, if you have to shoot inside, then try setting up your shot near a window or somewhere where you have some kind of light to use to your advantage. Here's another quick tip. Always assess your shooting conditions to determine the settings you'll need before you start shooting. As we discussed earlier, manually selecting your settings is the ideal way to practice photography or videography. However, your camera does have automatic settings. And what these automatic settings will do is try and determine your ISO, aperture, and shutter speed for you to get what it thinks is the best image possible. The only way you'll be able to get the best image possible is if you determine what that is because your camera won't always make the best choices. So now let's look at how to actually input your ISO settings into your camera to get the best image result possible. The first thing you wanna check for is that your camera is on manual mode. That way you can manually input your ISO settings. This is indicated by the M on your mode dial right here and I already put my camera on manual, so let's continue. This camera in my hand right here has a dedicated ISO button, but not all cameras have one. Some of them, like this other camera right here, you have to change the ISO by selecting this function button, this button right here that says FN, and that's how you change your ISO. And when I press that button with my left index finger, you can see the ISO sensitivity gets highlighted on the screen right here. Now with your ISO button selected, you wanna go ahead and roll this wheel right here where my right thumb is, and that will help you to change your ISO value. Okay, here's an example of what your videos or photos will look like when you increase the ISO. Now I'm gonna roll the wheel, and then you can see that the ISO values will change as well as the image will get really, really bright. Now we're coming back down with the ISO. And this right here looks like a good exposure where it's not too bright and it's not too dark and we can clearly see what's going on in the image. Now here's an example of shooting in low light conditions where you're gonna need to go higher with your ISO to get a decent looking image. Now if you look at the image right here that we're recording, you can see in the dark areas right here that there's a bit of noise because of us bringing our ISO so high up. This is what I meant when I said the higher you go with your ISO, the more image quality you're likely to lose. So right here, we're just gonna come back down with the ISO. So this looks like a good ISO to be at where we can see what's going on and there's not much noise in our image. And remember guys, this applies the same in both photography and when you're recording videos. 
Some of us may have cameras with two LCD screens like this one right here. One LCD on the back of the camera that we're all used to and then a small one on the top like this one right here. If you have a small screen on the top of your camera, then you'll be able to change your ISO values by looking on that small LCD screen. Okay guys, that's how we'll close off today's video. I hope everything we've discussed and everything we've practiced gave you a better understanding of what ISO is and how to use it to your advantage. Remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button if you like this video, leave a comment if you want to give some feedback. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, my name is CJAM and I will see you guys in the next video.